Hey yo, run my rap Panthers ass, say rah rah. I'll part to the people. Yes, it's your boy CBO. We back with another episode. Let's get right into it. Who is Yusef Hawkins? Rest in peace, Yusef Hawkins. Born March 19th, 1973. Shot to death August 23rd, 1989. Yusuf Hawkins was a 16-year-old black boy from Brooklyn. He was shot to death on August 23rd, 1989 in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, in New York. Um, he was attacked by a mob of 30 white kids, 30 white males, with baseball bats and handguns. Um, they was jealous because some Italian girl had invited some black kids to a party and they was jealous and they decided to kill the first black person they seen. And they told Yusef that they was gonna sell him a, a, a Pontiac, a used car. And when, he, when him and his friends went to go buy the used cars, they ambushed him. And, and they shot him two times in the, in the chest. Um, now I'm gonna listen to an exclusive Interview is going to talk, tell you a little bit about the case. So, hearts of people. Young men were convicted in connection with the death of a 10-year-old. Now, for the first time since the trial nine years ago, one of the assailants is talking about the incident publicly. New York's Jeff Simmons joins us now with that exclusive story. Jeff, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Well, Keith Mandela was sentenced to 12 years in prison for his role in the death of Hawkins in, the, in August of 1989. At the time, the judge said without him, no one would have died. Now, a decade later, we sat down with him, and there was one clear message that he wanted to get across. I'm not a monster. I'm not even anything close to a monster. Keith Mandela is searching for forgiveness, not just from the public, but from the family of Yusef Hawkins. The teenager slain in the racial attack in Bensonhurst nearly 10 years ago. Mandela served eight years in prison for being the ringleader. Mandela did not take the stand when he went to trial, nor has he ever spoken publicly about the trial or Hawkins until now. In an exclusive interview with New York One this weekend, Mandela said he is still trying to apologize in person to the Hawkins family. I'd like to meet them face to face. Um they would be able to uh, vent their anger to me, as I'm sure they would like to. Um, I would be very accepting of that because I know that what happened was wrong. And I would do anything that I could to atone for what happened. What happened took place at this corner on August 23, 1989. Mandelo and some friends, angry that a friend had invited black and Hispanic teens to her birthday party in the predominantly Italian neighborhood, came to the area armed with baseball bats. Meanwhile, Hawkins and some friends had gone to Bensonhurst to see a used car and they were confronted by the group. 19-year-old Joseph Fama shot Hawkins twice in the chest, fatally. Fama was sentenced to 32 years to life in prison. Mandela was acquitted of murder and manslaughter, but convicted of lesser crimes. I got a few guys together because I was threatened. And there was supposed to be a fight. And at 18 years old, you your first uh, thing is, well, to protect yourself. And it's a macho thing, and it's kind of like a protect your turf type of thing. I did not know Yusuf Hawkins or his friends. Uh, that part of it was coincidental, very unfortunately. Um, this wasn't planned or, 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 or set out to do to to uh, to kill Yusuf Hawkins or, or his friends, uh, and it just kind of got out of control, basically. He claims to this day that he is not a racist. It's easy to be called a racist um, and then have everyone believe it, but the fact was that the situation didn't really start out as a racist situation. Obviously, it ended up that way because a black boy got killed by white guys or, or, or a gang of white kids. Um, I had uh, black and Spanish friends uh, that were actually there that night, but for, for some reason or another, they, they didn't get arrested. The attack landed him a 12-year prison sentence, polarized New York City, and contributed to the defeat of Mayor Ed Koch in the election of the city's first African-American mayor, David Dinkins. Mandela's three bids for parole were denied, 
but he was able to be released after eight years from prison because of good behavior. The release at an elaborate welcome home party last May triggered a protest by the Reverend Al Sharpton. A short time later, Mandela penned this letter of apology to the Hawkins family. Hawkins' parents, Diane Hawkins and Moses Stewart, who is now an aide to Sharpton, wrote a response, but said that Mandela should, and I am quoting here, give up the names of the unknown members of the mob responsible for killing our son. Mandela said that that is an unfair request. As far as identifying others, I mean, um, basically, I don't know where, what, what that would lead to. Um, <clears throat> Ten years ago when this happened, um, you know, there was a, a more than a proper investigation, and they know all the suspects that were involved. Mandela now wears this ankle monitor to ensure that he maintains a curfew, um, one of the conditions he must abide by until the year 2002. He is working as a clerk attending a college in Brooklyn, and thinking now about a career as a teacher. So basically atone for what happened, and maybe some way, maybe work with younger kids, or help people, and maybe speak about racism. In the meantime, he said he plans to write another letter to the family. And I would hope that they would find more peace in possibly forgiving me. Do you think you'll find more peace? Yes, I would. Now, technically, Mandelo is not on parole, although he must adhere to certain conditions. Besides the curfew, he cannot drink alcohol and he cannot leave the five boroughs. He also is... All right, all right. That's a little bit about Yusuf Hawkins. So, how we make the connection today with the recent death of Amaya Arbery. As you can see, that white man being... Shelly saying wanting to shoot down black men for no reason. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. So, for me personally, Mars is going to keep my head on a swivel and be aware of my surroundings and the people I come in contact with because racism, discrimination, and all those things, those are, are real things. And you can get, you can become a victim, and you don't want to get ambushed like Lisa Hawkins or my Arbery or anybody else, Trayvon Martin. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. So that's what it's like being a black man in America. But what we have to do. That album, Colonial Virus, available now on all streaming platforms. And watch that documentary, Hip Hop is a Revolutionary Act. Part of being a Black Panther is keeping a clean system. So click that link and detox your body, health as well. Hip Hop is a Revolutionary Act. It's your boy CBO, and I'm out. I'll shake.